and welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan. Uh, I'm so sorry I didn't get an episode to you guys last week. I intended to. I just got really busy. <laughs> I did not intend or expect, I should say, that my kids going to their new virtual school would be as involved for me. Uh, last time when they were going with their other school, um, their teacher took care of most of it. I just had to make sure they were there every day. Uh, this is a little more hands-on for me as their parent. I have to do a little more teaching, which is not bad. Um, but it, it's definitely a little more hands-on, which is not a bad thing. They're, they're actually getting a much better education than they were at the previous school. So yay! <laughs> uh, that being said, it has taken up a little more of my time than I wanted to, but it's okay. I'm enjoying it. I'm, my kids are enjoying it. They're doing really well with it. So I apologize for not getting an episode out. If I miss a week, that's probably the reason. It was probably just a really busy, chaotic week with their school stuff. So going forward, I'm still trying to get out an episode every week, but if I miss a week, y'all know why. So I hope you guys had a wonderful week. Um, in addition to that, part of their education stuff was learning how to garden and to deal with uh, the preserving of the food. Well, if you follow me on Twitter, we made a lot of pickles this weekend as part of one of their homework assignments. We made 26 jars of pickles. My cucumbers went nuts this year, y'all. Uh, and it also kind of makes me sad because now we're getting to the point with our garden that we're starting to see some of our plants come to the end of their life cycle. They're starting to, like our tomatoes especially, starting to shut down and kind of die off because they've produced their fill. They're, they're getting to that point, which is really interesting because it's still really warm here. And I guess that when they the tomatoes feel like they've done enough, they're done. That's it. So, uh, they're still producing. They're just not producing as much as they were. Same with my cucumbers. My cucumbers have slowed down quite a bit. My green beans have slowed down quite a bit. Uh, they're just getting towards that time of year when we're seeing a transition of seasons and a transition also in the spirit world. This, the veil is starting to open more. We're seeing a lot more. And it's my favorite time of year. I, I am a spooky bitch through and through. So it's always fun to feel the transition into fall and winter because this is my favorite time of year. I do like spring. Spring is nice. Uh, I hate summer. It's just too hot for me. I don't like it. <laughs> if I maybe lived in a cooler climate, that would be different, but I don't. So I definitely enjoy the spooky season because being a Scorpio, that's, that's my season. I'm a spooky bitch. So anywho... I hope you guys really enjoyed our my interview with Kiki Dombrowski and her talking about divination and her book, A Curious Future. If you haven't already bought the book, go buy it. Also, if you have not listened to that episode, pause this one, go listen to that one, then come back to this one because this is part two of our divination series. And today we're going to talk about pendulums. I love my pendulum. I my pendulum. It's so funny. When I bought my pendulum, I was like, oh, you know, I should have one, you know, because that's a witchy thing. It's like, I should have the tools. Even if I never use the tools, I should have the tools. No, you don't need to buy all the tools if you're not going to use them. That being said, my pendulum, I bought it, sat on a shelf for about six months. I didn't actually touch it until one day I decided, you know what? I want to play with it and just learn with it and grow with it. And once I started doing that, I kind of realized I was like, man, this is fun and easy. It doesn't require any previous knowledge. It doesn't require you to learn anything. It just requires you to spend time with your pendulum and learn how you work with your pendulum. It's probably the easiest form of divination out there next to yes and no cards or yes and no dice or yes and no coins. Um, it's just extremely easy. Now, the only challenging aspect of working with my pendulum is trying to figure out what's the most comfortable way for me to hold it. And that's going to differ from which to which. 
So whatever you choose with your pendulum of how to hold it, that's on you. You get to pick that. That's There is no set way. I've seen some people hold it up by the very end. I've some, seen some people put it on. I don't actually know what they're called. I guess a pendulum stand, I guess is the appropriate thing, where it looks like some kind of like wire thing that you hook your pendulum onto. Uh, my pendulum's not set up to actually work that way. So I would have to like tie it or something to do that. And I feel a real disconnect from it if it's on something else. Like I've, I've experimented putting it up on something and it was just, for me, it was very disconnected. Like my pendulum's like, yeah, I'll work, but what's the point? I'm not connecting with you and your energy. So why am I doing this? Like it was just very non-responsive. And when I say non-responsive, like it was, it would say yes or no to a point, but they were very soft yeses, very soft noes. It was just like, I don't care about this. I, I like being connected to you. I like working with you and you being the conduit of the energy. So if you use, I guess a pendulum stand is the appropriate term. I don't actually know what those things are called. Um, I've seen them. I've seen them in lots of videos, but it basically it's like some sort of wire stand that your pendulum gets on, hooked on, but the, the string gets hooked onto. Um, I don't know really what they're called because they're not my thing. So I, when mine, the one that I used, it was a different stand it was not a traditional like pendulum stand or pendulum I, we're gonna call it a pendulum stand y'all so it wasn't a traditional one it was one that I had jerry-rigged myself because I wanted to try it um maybe that was why because it was jerry-rigged but either way I still felt really disconnected from it so not my thing I like to actually hold my pendulum and hold the string and do all that so however you choose to hold it is entirely up to you. There is no right way. There is no wrong way. It is based on what feels right to you as the witch. Now let's talk about the pendulums themselves. Some pendulums are metal. Some pendulums are made from gemstones. Some pendulums are necklaces. Yes, you can use a necklace as a pendulum. Some are literally a rock tied to a string. Yeah, you can get that wild and crazy with it, you guys. So mine is a bloodstone one. I bought it off of Amazon many, many, many moons ago. And um, it's been wonderful. And it's funny when you buy something from like an online store like that, uh, like Amazon, like a big retailer, you think that it may or may not work. Like it may work perfectly or you may be totally disconnected from it. Uh, I have always been very attracted to bloodstone, um, in parts, I think that has to do with my deities, but that's a whole nother story. And with mine, I very much was connected from straight out of the box. It was very easy for me to work with. It has a nice little drawstring bag that it came with, uh, where I store it and when I'm not using it. And it's just, we've been good friends ever since. Now, the one thing you'll learn throughout this series is a lot of my divination tools are tools, but I'm of a two school mindset. One, they are tools and I can mend them to my will. And two, they also have their own energy and life force to them. And as we talk a little bit about energy, possibly part of that energy is my own, but I also feel like I am just a conduit that's asking the questions, whether it be for myself, whether it be for a spirit, whether it be for someone else, it doesn't matter, but I'm the conduit of the energy that helps wherever the answer is coming from to the pendulum, to the cards, whatever it may be, I am just the conduit. So that's how I see it. You may see it completely different and that's okay. It's not wrong and my way is not wrong because our energies and who we are as witches are completely different. There is no real right way. It's your way. We've talked a lot about this on the show. And the one thing is witchcraft is specific to individuals. And it should never feel cookie cutter. Now you might participate in a coven where you all do. I'm going to call it cookie cutter, but it's not really cookie cutter. You do rituals that are all with the same intention, same mindset, same deities, same function. 
Whereas in your own private practice, it might be completely different. You might work with different deities. You might work with different spirits. You might work with different magics in different ways. And that's okay. You can still be a part of a coven, do things the coven way, and then go home and do your own magic. It doesn't mean that you're breaking the coven's will. And if the coven tells you that, then I suggest finding a different coven because that's not the case. The case is you can still participate with a group and be just fine and everybody do it one way. Even if it's different from your own personal magics, it's still okay. Sometimes it's fun to experiment with different people's ways because we learn, we grow that way. But if it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. You're not broken. You're not wrong. It's not anything. It might just be that that's not a good fit for you. And to go back to your way and find what works best for you. Same with divination. Pendulums might not be your thing. And that's perfectly acceptable. That's perfectly okay. Tarot might be your thing. Stone readings might be your thing. Dice might be your thing. Ogham staves might be your thing. Etc, etc, etc. With the multitudes of divination techniques that there are out there. Your way is not wrong. Your, what you prefer is not wrong. If somebody says, oh, if you're going to read divination, it has to be tarot. No, it doesn't. It can be whatever you'd like. If you would like to divine through music, um, some people call it shufflemancy, where you put on shuffle, it picks a, a song, and you listen to the lyrics, and the lyrics tell you what you need to hear for the day. That's perfectly acceptable as well. You can divine with just about anything. You can divine with food. You can divine with... Uh, the sun, the stars, the clouds, you name it. The divination is not cut and dry to one individual practice or an individual's practice. Your way of reading tarot might be completely different. Now, we'll get to tarot eventually, but one of the things I would say um, in regards to that is learn the basics and then play. And then experiment. Now, the cool thing and the reason that I started with pendulums is there's not really any basics. It's all about play. It's all about learning what works best for you when you play with your pendulum. Now, for me, when I work with my pendulum, my yes and no is up and down. Or I'm sorry, my yes is up and down. My no is side to side. My rephrase, it spins. And sometimes it'll spin clockwise, sometimes counterclockwise. It depends on what I'm communicating with. If I'm communicating with like a human spirit, it's usually clockwise, I believe. No, I'm sorry, counterclockwise. I had to do the little figure. Um, if I'm communicating with something that's not human, usually it's clockwise versus counterclockwise. It's very interesting how it works. Um, and then my, my maybe is a diagonal. So it's not you know, what's the word I'm trying to say? It could be diagonal to the right. It could be diagonal to the left. It doesn't really matter. As long as it, if it's diagonal, it's usually a maybe. A rephrase for me is it spins. That's if I'm not working with my pendulum board. Now, my pendulum board has yes up and down. Or if you want to turn it, you can have your yes be right to left. I've done this. I have experimented with my pendulum board and made my yes go right to left, or I'm sorry, side to side, and my no be up and down. And it does have a rephrase and a maybe. One way, one di diagonal way is rephrase. The other diagonal way is maybe. Now, if I'm using that board, my pendulum will tune to that board and respond accordingly with that board. So if I say, hey, I would like you to point to yes, it will find yes in whatever direction that yes is. I've even experimented to where my yes was diagonal and it did work. So if you're using the pendulum board, mat, cloth, whatever it may be, play with that and see how your pendulum responds. Your pendulum will respond in accordance to what you're trying to do. At least mine does. But mine and I are very in tune with each other. So I will be like, we're going to play and see where the board ends up. I have also used my pendulum in multiple fun ways um, where I have a rune board that is much larger than my pendulum board. So I can set my pendulum board on top of uh, my rune board 
and I will say, ask a yes or no question. And then I will say, can you give me more clarification on what I need to work on in accordance to that yes and point to a rune? And it will do it. It will find the rune. And then I will ask the board again, as I'm pointing with my other hand, is this the rune that you were talking about? And it will say yes or no. And sometimes it does say no because I'm pointing to the wrong one and it's actually the one next to it. Now, if you have a pendulum board or a cloth or whatever that has letters or numbers, you can ask it to spell out a word or even a phrase. Now, just remember the one thing about this is it's kind of like texting with an old flip phone. It's going to take a minute. And don't ask for a full sentence. Ask for a couple of words, short phrase, whatever it may be, even a word, because A, it's going to take a long time to spell out. B, it's going to be challenging energetic wise with whatever, whatever you're communicating with. So just be mindful of that. If you're asking for a specific number, if your num if your board has numbers, get your numbers. Usually it's one through zero. So if it's asking for multiple digits, you need to ask yes or no, is this multiple digits? And then have it point to the different numbers and then ask it, is it 4,720? Whatever it may be. <laughs> That was just an example, y'all. So, um, but yeah, with that, it's just play. The best advice I can give you with your pendulum is play with it. Sit down and just ask it random questions. Yes or no's are usually obvious. Um, if you ask more of a like broader question, I would then, you know, ask it a broad question. See if it gives you a yes or no or whatever. And then pull some tarot and ask it to point to whichever tarot card you need to help you answer that broader question. That's also fun. If you like tarot, you could use Ogham, you could use dice, you could use, if you use dice, uh, it will point to a specific number. Um, so if you have multiple dice, it might be pointing to a specific one that's at that number. It might, and if it kind of like, you know, does a circular motion, maybe you need to learn from all the cards or all the dice or all the staves or whatever you may be using in addition to that. So it's a lot of fun to play with pendulums because they can give you some really good insight. They're also really great for spirit communication. <laughs> really great because it's not difficult to manipulate. What I have found at least is it's not difficult for the spirits to manipulate the pendulum but it does sometimes take them a lot harder, a lot more energy to try to communicate through like an Estes method or a spirit box because sometimes they don't know how that technology works, whereas Pendulum is pretty old school and pretty easy. Is that always the case? No, but some spirits do prefer it. In our seances that we do over in Gilded, we do use the Pendulum, we use cards, we use the Estes method, we use uh, the EEG machine. We also use the games frames and all sorts of other different technologies to see if the esoteric methods of like tarot, augum, dice, pendulum, etc. match up with the technological side. So it's really fun to see how that plays out. And sometimes the spirits do a whole lot of talking through the pendulum, but they may not be doing a whole lot through the spirit box because it's harder for them to manipulate the spirit box versus the pendulum. So if you're trying to communicate with spirits, pull out your divination stuff because sometimes that will get you some pretty cool answers. So when it comes to your pendulum, pick a pendulum that feels right for you. You can buy a basic metal one if you'd like. If you'd like to buy a gemstone one, you can do that. Support your local witchy shops if you can. Um, there's some also great online witchy shops that you could support. Uh, I don't know if Mystic Dream has a pendulum. I know they sell the pendulum boards, so I will include that in the links, but I don't know if they sell pendulums. I honestly haven't looked because I love mine. So if they do, let me know because that would be great. <laughs> so when it comes to all of this, play, enjoy, but always remember that your way is going to be the right way. So remember, if your yes and no is different than mine, that's okay. If you're wanting to read it differently, then, you know, if you want to use it to read tarot, 
cool put a whole bunch of tarot slide your tarot decks across like a table or something and have your pendulum like or maybe put them in like a circle or something and have your pendulum like try to stop on one of those tarot cards that would be fun i've never done that i want to try that now <laughs> um so that would be really interesting. You might try that also with oracle decks because sometimes oracle decks are smaller than tarot decks. But just play. Have a good time with it. Learn with it. Have your pendulum. Learn your energies. Learn If you believe that it has a spirit of its own, have its or energy of its own, learn that energy and learn how to work with it. Now, let's quickly talk a little bit about cleansing your pendulums. Now, for me, I know my pendulum needs a cleansing because it'll feel heavy. It'll feel weighted down way more than it should. And at that point, I know that I've done a lot of work with it and it needs a good cleanse. You can do cleansing a couple of ways. You can leave it out in the moonlight. You can do a sound cleansing. That's my personal favorite. Uh, you could put it in salt as long as your stone or whatever is okay with being in salt. Same with water. So be careful about those two and just enjoy that. It's fun. It's so much fun to play with pendulums. Like I get so passionate about my pendulum because it's so easy, people. It's so easy. So my personal favorite way to cleanse my pendulum is sound. And I have speakers on my desk and I just unplug my, my headphone jack from them so my headphones aren't connected to them. And I will just play some music and set my pendulum directly in front of the speaker. And a couple songs later, it's usually pretty cleansed and ready to work. And it takes no effort. None. So pendulums are what I call low-key, easy divination. In the coming weeks, we will be talking about some more divination practices that aren't so low-key because they require a little bit more knowledge base. But here's the fun thing. No matter what you're doing you can still use those divination practices even if you're learning. So if you have to take the time to stop and look up a tarot card meaning or look up a Ogham stave, whatever it may be, that's okay because the more you work with it, the more you're going to pick up on it and the more you're going to get comfortable with it. And, you know, some people say start with the Rider weight, uh, Rider weight deck. Uh, I did not. I started with a different deck, but a lot of people do say that because it's got the traditional imagery on it. I understand the traditional imagery. I have a traditional style deck that is the Everyday Witch deck uh, by Deborah Blake, and that's my traditional deck. I don't actually own a Rider Waite deck because I've never really identified with the imagery. Like it, it doesn't speak to me, sing to me, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not. <laughs> Oddly enough, it's not artistic enough for me. I need something that's a little non-traditional, but that's who I am. So I would say if you're going to pick out your first deck, try to pick out a deck that is a little more along the traditional line. So you can learn the imagery, but it's not required. You can pick a deck that speaks to you completely. Now, if you're somebody that's more of a visual person and you like to use imagery to use your intuition to speak and all that, definitely get more of a traditional style deck that has that imagery. Uh, if you're somebody that just listens to what the cards tell you and you know the meanings, you can get a non-traditional deck and that's perfectly fine. I've got several non-traditional decks and I love them. I love working with them. So... Sorry, guys, we went on a tarot tangent there. <laughs> I apologize. I love divination if you haven't been able to figure that out. And we're going to talk more about that. Uh, so anyway, back to pendulums. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I get to love the ADHD brain and, and how it goes off on tangents sometimes. Uh, but yeah, back to the pendulums. Buy your pendulum. Enjoy your pendulum. Work with your pendulum. Now, let's say that you don't currently have the funds to go buy a pendulum. Pendulums are pretty affordable. They usually are anywhere between $5 to $20. They are not very expensive at all, but if you just can't swing it right now, if you have a necklace at home, use that. If you want to go get a rock from your driveway or your yard and a little rock and tie it to a string, you can use that too. It's just an old school version of a pendulum. It still works regardless. No matter what you choose for your pendulum, it's still probably going to work. 
You just need something that has weight on the bottom of that string and the string for you to hold. And obviously you want to give it enough slack in there for you to, for it to swing and to point to things. So, you know, obviously don't give it two feet because you're going to have to hold your arm up really high and it's going to get tired and then your arm's going to shake and it's going to affect your readings. Me, I like to set my elbow on my desk and just hold it that way because it's a lot more sturdy that way. Uh, sometimes I will even just kind of lean my forearm on the edge of my desk and that also helps with the sturdiness. Now, if you're somebody who shakes a lot, pendulums may not be your thing or you might want the pendulum stand that we were talking about at the beginning of the episode and that might help you. There's nothing wrong with getting a pendulum stand. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's whatever works best for you. So some days my MS is very shaky and I just don't use my pendulum on those days. I will pull a different form of divination versus using that. Um, I have yes or no dice. I have yes or no cards. Those kinds of things I will easily just kind of do that and see what comes up. So if you're looking for a yes or no answer, there's multiple ways you can use other forms of divination for yes or no. And we'll talk about those in future episodes. But for today, I think I have told you enough about pendulums and why I love them and why you should look into getting them for yourself. And I hope that you will play with it. And also, starting, well, by the time you guys get this episode, we hope we've already started. We actually started the 25th of August. But every Wednesday night in Gilded at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, we will be, let me double check that time for you guys. One second. That might actually be 6 p.m. my time, which is central time. Um, but let's double check that. I'm sorry. That is 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. central. Uh, we will be doing what we call our Witchy Wednesdays. So if you are learning divination and you want to experiment with friends and you want to play with friends and test out your skills and grow because sometimes it's easy to read for yourself but you're not sure if you're getting the accurate stuff so sometimes working with other people helps we will be doing that every wednesday at 7 p.m in gilded in the pagan switchy corner channel so i'll put the link in the description the other thing that we will also be doing if you are a financial subscriber or supporter of the podcast. First of all, thank you for being one of those. Secondly, I'm going to be doing away with the supporter function for Anchor. I will be switching that over to the subscription function. So the subscription function is new and it's very interesting. It works kind of similar to Patreon. And it's going to give you guys access to bonus episodes. The bonus episodes will be all sorts of fun things. Uh, you might just be catch-up episodes. It might be spell work. It might be more meditations. I know you, how you guys love those. And we will be doing all sorts of fun stuff with that. As I play with that and learn how that works, we will also, it, it may have more options. It's brand new. I'm still learning how it works. But here in the coming weeks, there will be a transition. If you are a supporter of the show, I will be DMing you either on Twitter, Discord, Gilded, wherever I have your contact info, even if it's an email, I will be contacting you and letting you know that it is transitioning. So that way you can switch over to a subscriber if that is what you choose. Thank you all so much for listening to the show. I hope that you guys will consider subscribing here in the future. Um, that should be up in the next couple of days, hopefully hopefully. <laughs> I really hope so. Um, I, I say hopefully because I have been in, oh, that's the other thing. I've been in crazy book reviewer mode. Um, I am a reviewer with Llewellyn Books and so is Kyle over on Chaos and Shadow in the Revelator Network. So if you are looking to expand your witchy library, you guys have heard me do a couple of book reviews here on this channel, um, but most of the reviews are in written format, and you can go check those out over on revelatornetwork.com forward slash news. There's several different reviews up there, and those are all cool witchy books. There's going to be several ones coming out. I believe that we've got them set to come out every Friday. So 
as long as I'm getting through those books, I've read like three books this week. So <laughs> rock on. <laughs> it's been a fun, crazy week with that as well. And I've been turning out those great reviews. So go check those out and head over to RiverlanerNetwork.com, explore our other shows, explore all the other cool stuff that's happening, join Gilded, come for the seances, come for the Witchy Wednesdays, which by the way, the seances are every Saturday at 7 p.m. And you can have access to those either on Twitch or in Gilded. So double check the where we're sending you for those weeks. I believe that all of them going forward will be on Twitch, uh, through at least through Halloween, uh, because they're all open to the public right now. So check those out and thank you guys so much for joining me thank you guys for being supporters and lovers of the show uh i hope you guys are staying safe especially in this trying time with this pandemic and just be good to each other be good to yourselves play with your divination and i'll see you guys next week bye everybody